All right, good morning and welcome to the August 16th uh, meeting of the Bengal Advisory Committee meeting at Texas Lottery Commission. Uh, before we get to the agenda this morning, I wanted to remind everybody that the court reporter is not in person. Uh, they are online, so if you could please do not talk over anyone. Uh, let everybody finish their their sentence and there will be plenty of time for everyone to get their their uh, piece heard. So please don't talk over anyone. Um, so we'll move on to first item of business. We'll call the order meeting to order at 1001. And we'll start off by the American Pledge and the Texas Pledge. Mr. Anastasio, would you lead us, please, sir? Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. Not a Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Okay. All right. Next item of business uh, roll call. We have our brand new BAC member, Stacy Johnson, uh, is with us today. Stacy, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, we'll start the roll call with you, Stacy Johnson. Here. Melody Grant. Here. Veronica Uriagas. Here. Neil Bourgoin. Here. Michael Anastasio. Here. Tommy Duncan. Here. Jason Paul. Here. And Corey, are you there with us today on online? I sure am. Awesome, Corey, and I am here. We have a full BAC panel today, so thank you all very much for showing up. All right, next item, item five, meeting minutes from June 20th. Uh, any uh, public comment from those minute meetings? Meeting minutes? All right, if none, um, do we have a Motion to approve the minutes is read. I'll so move. Uh, Neil makes the motion to approve. Second. It's read. We have second. I second. Rock is seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any minutes from June 20th are approved. Moving, moving on to item six, uh, the, the annual report. Uh, this is the Bingo Advisory Committee 2022-2023 annual report that you all should have in front of you. Uh, I will read this report uh, into the record so that we have it. Uh, the uh, I do want to commend a couple people very quickly. Uh, first, Tom Stewart, who helped on this. I think Tom's here yet, uh, but Tom really did the heavy lifting on this. Uh, I know he got. Uh, the figures from the staff that were very helpful in this and Steve Bresnan as well helped on this. So thank you all very, very much uh, for making uh, I guess many hands makes life work. So thank you very much. Uh, section 2001.060 government code requires an, an annual charitable bingo report by the Texas Lottery Commission to the Lieutenant Governor, Governor, Speaker of the House and the Legislature. 16 TAC 402.106N requires an annual report by the Bengal Advisory Committee to the Commission. Although the statute and the rule contain slightly different elements, this report provides the Commission with the information required by both the statute and the rule and additional information so that it is comprehensive. This report uses data provided by the Charitable Bingo Division. The data may have not been audited. The statute uses the term net proceeds, while the rules uses the term net receipts. For the purposes of this report, the terms are synonymous. Gross receipts. Gross receipts fell slightly in 2022 after a significant bounce back in 2021. Calendar year 2022 saw $894 million in gross receipts versus $938.4 million in gross receipts in 2011, 2021, excuse me. 
This 5% drop year over year was expected after the 2020 pandemic low of 696 million point eight. The 2022 calendar year gross receipts are in line or slightly above gross receipts for years prior to the pandemic. Pull tab sales continue to drive sales overall. Supply chain issues are largely disappearing, but the diversity of pull tab products has declined as manufacturers seek to consolidate product lines and cut costs. Adjusted gross receipts. The term adjusted gross receipts is defined as the amount remaining after prizes are paid. At $197 million, AGR also dropped slightly in 2022. That is an 8% drop from the 214.2 million reported in 2021 and a 29% increase over 152.5 in 2020. Yet again, it is in line with the years prior to the pandemic. Net proceeds or net receipts. Overall net proceeds to charities, the total amount of money retained by the charity conductors of Bingo after payment of all expenses saw a decline in 2022. At 28.5 million, that's nearly 37% lower than a historical high of 45.4 million in 2021. However, a three year average using 2020 to 2022 data is almost 32 million. This includes the historical pandemic low in 2020 of 20 21.9 million. 2021's historical bounce back of 45.4 million. And the 2022 near return to normal is 28.5 million. The three year average is comparable to pre pandemic annual net proceeds. Net proceeds were 14.5 of just receipts in 2022, compared to 14.3% in 2020 and 21.2% in 2021. Charitable distributions. The Bingo Enabling Act requires charity conductors to distribute for charitable purposes all net proceeds that exceed the maximum capital reserve allowed by the Act. Some organizations chose to maintain capital reserves lower than allowed and distribute net proceeds beyond what may be statutorily required. Maintaining a capital reserve is fundamental to a business. This explains the difference in net proceeds to charitable distributions to the charities. Charitable distributions for 2022 were $27.9 million compared to 20.8 million in 2020 and 40 million in 2021. Expenses. Aggregate expenses held the line in 2022 at 168.5 million compared to 168.8 million in 2021. Attendance. At 10.1 million dollar or 10.1 million attendance declined nearly 10% compared to 11.1 million in the 2021 calendar year. This is a 44% decline since 2007 at 17.9 million. This steady decline remains the biggest threat to charitable bingo. We are hopeful that recent legislative changes, new prize structure, and more temporary sessions will provide charity conductors with additional tools to stem the attendance decline. As we've noted in the past, research indicates a general lack of awareness is a key challenge for charitable bingo. Bingo is not top of mind compared to other entertainment options. Private sector digital advertising conducted last year showed promising res returns on investment. However, those initiatives have not achieved the scale needed to slow or reverse attendance declines. Providing feedback. The Bingo Advisory Committee has successfully provided feedback and comments to the Charitable Bingo Operations Division staff and commissioners on all administrative rules and amendments. Website review. The Bingo Advisory Committee is still currently reviewing and collecting data to report its recommendations to the staff and the commissioners. Reporting. The Bingo Advisory Committee successfully reported to the Commission updates on the BAC's activities, industry accomplishments, challenges, and concerns. Annual report. 
the BAC had submitted the required annual report to the commission and to the charitable bingo operations director, including comment. By most all metrics, charitable bingo returned to near normal historical norms in 2022. A dip in AGR for charities is always something to keep an eye, a close eye on. After all, charitable benefits are the reason for being. Yet, charitable bingo remains a niche entertainment and gaming option. We will closely monitor implementation of SB 643 changes with hopes that the tools and flexibility it provides will help charity conductors retain existing customers and attract new ones. The Bingo Advisory Committee remains committed to working with the commissioners and charitable bingo division staff to advise and respond to the issues that arise this year and those to come. We particularly want to thank the lottery and bingo division staff for their work during this past legislative session. We appreciate the commission providing this important forum and we are prepared to respond to any request you have of us. We respect, so respectfully request that the commissioners vote to reinstate the Bingo Advisory Committee for a one year period. Two years. I think it's two years. So two years. You said you said one year. Yes. Do y'all did y'all say one year? You said one. Year. I say it's one said two years. One said two years. I think we have. Okay, it's supposed, to, it's supposed to say one year. Yeah, got the wrong version. And I'm sorry about that. Might be a that might be a previous this version. Is, yeah, but it is supposed to say one year. Picked up here just like. Okay. Okay. I'll say one or two. The one I printed back home was uh, two. The one I printed at home is two. Okay. The one from they gave this morning is one. It's been updated. <laughs> yes. Any questions, comments on the report? Any public question or comment on the report? Questions on the report. This is the uh, annual report that we're required to present to the commissioners tomorrow. Um, if no one has any objections, can we? Y'all want to? Somebody want to make a motion to? A motion to accept. I second. We have a motion and a second to accept that the report is written and to present to the commissioners tomorrow. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have our <laughs> annual report. All right. Uh, next item, item seven, 2024 work plan. So each year we have to not only provide a year end report, an annual report, excuse me, uh, but we also have to provide a 2024 work plan or a work plan for the commissioners. This will be submitted to the commissioners tomorrow and they will have to vote on whether or not it is accepted. So we'll go through this real quick. Um, this is the uh, Bingo Advisory Committee fiscal year 2024 annual work plan. Uh, number one, encourage industry licensees and stakeholders to provide feedback and comments during the legislative sunset review of the Texas Lottery Commission and Charitable Bingo Operations Division and provide comments to the commission regarding the agency's sunset review. Number two, provide feedback and comments on rulemaking related to the implementation of SB 643. Number three, identify other potential rule or procedural changes that help organizations address challenges related to the conducting uh, to conducting charitable bingo. Any potential recommendations on changes to how bingo games are played shall be clearly authorized by Texas law and will not include electronic bingo, including electronic pool tabs or any other activities not authorized by law or video confirmation of pool tabs. Number four, provide feedback and comments to the CBOD staff and commissioners on changes to administrative rules in Chapter 402 and any other new amendments. Number five, work with CBOD staff to identify ways to increase filing of quarterly reports 
and other forms, making payments or prize fees using the online filing system. Number six, review components of the agency's charitable bingo website, including the listing of BAC members and recommend elements and information to be included in future website update. Provide, number seven, provide reports at each commission meeting that include status updates of the BAC's activities, industry accomplishments, challenges, or concerns. Number eight, develop the required BAC annual report to the commission on the state of the charitable bingo industry and submit to the commission and to the charitable bingo director by July 12th, 2024. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on the work plan? Uh, any public questions? Yes, sir. Steve Branson. For the record, I'm Steve Branson on behalf of the Bingo Interest Group. Uh, uh, first thing I'd like to do is say hello to the court reporter. Uh, <laughs> Amy and I represent the Texas Court Reporters Association and I appreciate what they do to make an accurate record of these meetings and court proceedings. Uh, I want to, I, I should know the answer to this, but it, does the commission's agenda for tomorrow include approving the extension of the bingo advisory committee? Okay, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be there uh, speaking in favor of the extension uh, of the bingo advisory committee. Uh, we very much appreciate these meetings and uh, uh, in particular, the way the staff and the BAC are uh, working together, I think it's been a really good thing for industry and, and for everybody. Uh, with regard to the first item on sunset, uh, I want to thank uh, Ms. Castanuela for, did I say it right? Yes. Castanuela. I did. Nice. Very nice. Um, for um, conveying to the Sunset Commission staff, uh, the Bingo Interest Group and other stakeholders, uh, Texas Charity Advocates, uh, and other stakeholders. And my friend Ann Mazuka is here for Atlantis for Charitable Bingo. Uh, and if if uh, if you're not in that list, you ought to be. Uh, so make sure that, that uh, Donna knows, uh, please. Uh, we will look uh, forward to participating in that, as I understand uh, right now. Uh, we know of no major issues. I think things are percolating along uh, pretty well. Um, and so uh, we'll be supportive uh, of the agency uh, in that regard, and I would encourage everybody else uh, to do so too. Um, with regard to other items, particularly implementation of 643, uh, we'll of course participate in that uh, with y'all uh, as uh, time goes on. Appreciate your service. Congratulations on uh, being the new guy, the new person, excuse me. And uh, thanks, appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> All right, any other questions, comments on the uh, post-2024 annual work plan? No other question? Somebody want to make a motion that we accept this? Or <laughs> <I'll move. laughs> Emil, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, thank we you. have a motion and we have a second from Veronica. All right, all in favor? All right. Any opposed? All right, we have a work plan to submit. What carries? It always comes back with you. It does. All right, uh, next item, item number eight, old business. Any old business from the public? Anyone have any comments on old business? Anyone up here? Old, old business want to go over? No? Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Since there's no old business, we'll go on to the next item. Item number nine, new business. Uh, got a couple of things that we need to address a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to ask LaDonna, um, if I may, is, um, is could we talk about the sunset review process and the maybe the anticipated rules coming up on 643 that y'all got working in. I know y'all been working hard on both of those things. You know, um, I would like first to offer any assistance if if we can help in any way with the sunset process. We would be glad to 
to step forward to help you out with that. But if you could just tell us a little bit about it, what the process is, if there's anything we need to do and how we can help. Thank you. So first of all, um, from Mr. President's presentation, um, each one of you is listed on the interest interest group, interested persons as a BAC member uh, with your affiliation. So you can probably expect to hear from the Sunset Commission staff at some point whenever they get to uh, looking at our agency. Um, the agency right now is preparing a self-evaluation report. We refer to it as the SER and it is due uh, before September 1st, um, so uh, yes, any minute now, tomorrow, guess, you know, in five minutes is what it feels like. <laughs> We're also, of course, busily working with IR to uh, get implementation of Senate Bill 643 and especially all the, the magic extra t new temporaries that are going to magically appear on September 1. Um, please be patient. We're having meetings every single morning um, at 8.30 to you know, try and make sure we've got it all right and talking about all the, all the uh, contingencies, possible contingencies. Um, on sunset, I think uh, what I can tell you is uh, basically what was in the work plan. You know, the best you can do for us is please be responsive when they contact you. I I think it's going to be, I mean, I've provided phone numbers and emails. They were specific to ask for updated emails. So maybe that's a tip that they'll contact you by email first, but I don't know. You, they've got all the contact information I have. Um, I don't know when the next step is for us. They haven't told us when they're going to start holding meetings with us. Um, and of course, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't be telling me when they're going to be reaching out to you, but eventually they'll be uh, hearings with the Sunset Commission members um, and uh, and a bill and then next session. Yay. <laughs> so we'll see. Do, uh, do you have anything that you're anticipating major change wise? No, I don't. I didn't think so. I don't I think we did a really good job with Senate Bill 643 with all the little cleanup. Um, oh, on the rules. So Tyler is working on rules. I've got them. Up super drafty form right now <laughs> um, and I haven't looked at them in a week so because uh, I'm kind of busy but um, we expect to have them at the commission meeting in October for publication so you all will see them hopefully sometime before that and before the October meeting the October EAC meeting and of course the commission meeting right and if I remember correctly once they're submitted at the commission meeting they'll be published will have 30 day comment. Yes. It, then it'll come up again and they'll vote on it. For adoption. Yes. Hopefully adoption in December. Okay. Oh. That's the plan. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions about sunset or rule processes or anything? I have a question. I, I forgive me because I don't know a lot about procedures and everything. So um what you guys are going through is that um, include that one thousand dollar payout that every, or five thousand dollar payout that everybody's talking about? Um, so th there's, in my opinion, there's there's no rulemaking necessary on that. On September first, the law says five grand. We actually don't have a rule that says anything about prize limits, with the exception we have a penalty chart that says you know if you give away in excess of twenty five hundred dollars per day per occasion, that's a violation. So this rule package we've got going in October changes that to five thousand. Um, but other than that, we don't have any regulations as opposed to the law. We don't have any rules on on price limits. So when that law changes on September 1, that's it's effective. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. It's not really about sunset, but um, since you went back to the new rule, I've had several uh, West Wars call and ask, can, is it, in your opinion, is it, legal and fine to sell tickets, pre-sell tickets for a bingo occasion. So we have a rule that prohibits uh, the reserving of bingo cards, bingo paper. Um, so <laughs> it's it's very complicated and in, in how it's phrased, right? You can't pre-sell bingo products. You can have an admission fee or a seat fee, but then that's the issue with that is it's that's not a proceed from the conduct of bingo. Uh, so what happens to that money? How does that how does that money like a lessor charges hundred dollars to reserve a seat or to sell a door ticket to an event? That's 
there's no guarantee that person's going to show up. There's no guarantee if they show up that they're going to play bingo. So I don't see any way that you can consider that a bingo proceed. So how does that money go from from the lessor? And it's fine if the lessor wants to charge $100 to enter their hall, they can do that. Um, but it seems to me the whole purpose of this is to guarantee that you have some sort of amount of income before you give away 15 grand on a Friday night. And I just don't I don't see how you get that that admission charge door fee that you collect in August into bingo proceeds. Um, unless there's some way you can give them their hundred dollars back when they walk in the door and then they can go up and use it to buy bingo products. But it's you know, and we we've kicked it around. It's not covered by anything, um, but it's I, I think it's pretty clearly it's not. It's not revenue from the conduct of bingo because you're collecting it on a Tuesday afternoon over the phone or over the internet. Nobody's playing bingo with it. And again, there's no guarantee that they will play bingo with it. They're just putting a deposit to enter your bingo hall. Maybe they just want to come in and smoke cigarettes and have a hot dog with their friends. You know, so <laughs> so it's kind of tricky. And like I said, there's there's a rule where you can't reserve bingo cards. You can't reserve bingo cards. So these two things are at odds with each other. Yes, sir, Tommy. Well, uh a previous director now, she said, he said that could be done with a merchandise voucher now because it's all merchandise. So it falls under the merchandise rule as a voucher for a special event, not saying Friday night, but that's how this is being done with a merchandise voucher. Yeah, I guess you could you could sell it as a gift certificate that's only redeemable on Friday, September 1st or whatever um, for $100 in bingo products. Um, and that would that would cover the issue because then it's it's a bingo, it's bingo revenue. Um, and it's, you know, and so when you take that reservation, when that person buys that gift certificate, you have to deposit that money within, or no, I'm sorry, that's when it gets used actually, mm -hmm. right, right. right. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think that would work if it's sold as a, as a gift certificate and then you guys would want it restricted to only the night of this big event, right? Um, so. Final question: um, If it's sold as a gift certificate, uh, there's no. We, we used to sell gift certificates. They come in and buy them for Christmas, and I would say 25% of them were never redeemed. Now you had, your your question was, where does that money go? Right. And it's gonna be the same question: Where does the money go? And is there a difference between the voucher and a gift certificate? Do you see the legal difference? Like purse bingo. These purse bingos that are all over Texas, they're, they, they're playing their, their one temporary. They pre-sell all their tickets. They have $80,000 worth of tickets pre-sold before they open the door. Now, that could be a lot for Lutheran dinner or two, but that's how they pre-sell their bingo. And you said you had a problem with that? or Well, so so temporary, 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 not the annual temporary um, organizations are not liable for a lot of the same regulations that other ones are because they're just impracticalities of, of an organization that hosts one one event per year you know they don't they don't have a bingo bank account they don't have, to have registered workers um and i guess this is something I, I wasn't aware of this situation but it sounds like something that somebody's let them slide on um, <laughs> i, I, I want to go backwards real quick they do not have to have registered bingo workers because some uh, Good Time Bingo gave my number out, and all of a sudden I got on the, the I'm having a one-off bingo thing. Will you provide all my workers for me? Because you got they got popped by you guys years ago. So now they do not have to have register. They can have anybody work it. They've never never had to as far as I'm aware. Um, no, I'm on the same page as her. We had some at the <laughs> church, and and we got a mm -hmm. phone call saying, hey. You know, they're free to if they want to. Maybe they want people who actually know what they're doing, uh, but <laughs> but they don't they're not required. But I mean, it was by this was years ago, but it was by yeah, the bingo patient. division that said, hey, you, you've got to list your workers. Well, that may be something that we need to. Do a little research on. Yeah, 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 not to get sidetracked. Yeah, yeah, not to. But yeah, we don't all says that the, temp the temporary temporaries are. are responsible for the law to the extent that it's practical. I guess somebody decided a long, long time ago, it's not really practical for somebody to go out and, and get a crew license for one event per year type type situation. So so we let it go. Well, um, typically the, the one off the one off bingo deals where they do get a. Uh, even even though they do get a uh, uh, one off temporary deal like the purse bingos, they don't follow any of the, the rules at all. 
period. Not a, not at all. Um, there's like they still have to submit reports. They they still have to make you know patients uh, in accordance like like everybody else. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things that they're not subject to. Yeah, but they're still they're still subject to the uh, the statute payouts yes. in the in the program, and they don't follow that at, at all. I mean, they're giving only eighty thousand dollars worth of merchandise prizes. That's a problem, um, and it's rampant. I mean, when you have the president of the Texas Sheriff's Association testifying in a House License Committee hearing, saying, "How do I handle this?" Um, that's it's prevalent. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I sympathize with with Melody and, and Veronica. There's some ambiguity there that maybe we need to look at further down the road and and not put anybody on the spot here. So yeah, um, if y'all want, we can put that on the agenda for next go around if that's all right with you, Tyler and LaDonna. So maybe we can talk more in detail about it, give everybody a chance to do some research. Uh, yeah, but back back to the the issue at hand is unfortunately with the, this door fee seat fee situation, it's it's in kind of a no man's land of income of you know how does how does that turn into revenue for for the for the for the conduct of bingo that goes into a bingo account? You know, a, a lessor is free to charge it, and sure business you can charge people to come in all day long. Um, but the issue is how does that then become bingo revenue without reserving? Uh, bingo cards because you can't do that. Um, That's instead. I think the video might be frozen. Yeah, we're running into that right now. So. I know there's a lot of questions. Hey, Ronnie. Okay. So come to the front of the room and you can yeah. hear a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're 75. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. Let's go back to the. Uh, uh, the your microphone. She, she the gift certificate. Yeah. So let's let's imagine this. Let's say you let's say you sell a um, hundred dollar seat fee today. Today, you first of all, if if you. I, I to me that's pretty clearly not revenue from the conduct of bingo. You might not even have a licensed occasion today. So now you've sold a bingo product on a day in which you don't even have a, a license to sell a bingo product. But I don't I don't think it's a bingo product. I think you're selling a reservation for a seat or an admission to your hall on September 1st. And I don't think that's bingo revenue. So what happens to that hundred dollars? Well, until September 1st. The organization can keep it, they can spend it freely, but there's no way to get that hundred dollars into the bingo account for the sale of bingo products. 
Okay. Uh, we're, product, are, are, we're selling gift certificates. Yeah, okay. certificates are different thing. Right. Well, I sell you a hundred dollar gift certificate. You give me a hundred dollars. Right. That does not go into any main no. account. No, it doesn't go anywhere until they redeem. So it's used. The same thing with the right. seat voucher. You're saying there's no difference between the seat voucher and a gift certificate. Yeah, except the except the gift certificate. The gift certificate is eventually redeemed for bingo products. Maybe not. I have some that never were, were redeemed. Or it's just sure. Yeah, and I think there's a provision after it expires. You can you can put that in, into your bingo account. The difference is the gift the gift card money will surely eventually end up in the bingo account one way or other, either because it expires or because it gets claimed. The admission fee to your hall never gets there because it's not it's not money for the purpose of bingo. It's money for the purpose of, of entering your hall. But I wouldn't say never. It, it, it does get there. I mean, people, I don't know who these people are just buying admission tickets, but the people that get, when Tommy's talking about vouchers or, or certificates to come play a special game, especially we can offer five thousand dollars they come that money does has the same amount of chance of get, going in the account as the gift certificate does i'm sorry for you no no absolutely i'm well, i think <laughs> think under the gift certificate rule it has to have an expiration date on it when you sell it so voucher would too the voucher does too but the voucher is for an event if it's not used by this certain date it's no good then i don't know what you do with the money but the money you have to keep and pay as they redeem that's what i'm saying the merchandise voucher is for an event so those people are going to show up so as they show up you're paying the gate for the redemption of the merchandise voucher that was given away with bingo product same thing with a gift certificate you sell a thousand gift certificates for a hundred dollars a piece you're responsible for that ten thousand dollars when it comes in and the voucher is are the gifts just redeemed? But I believe all these things have to have an expiration date on it. Now, after that day, I don't know what you do with the money. I think I'm, I'm pretty. I don't have the rule in front of me, but it, I'm pretty sure it, when it gifts to expires by its stated terms, then it's it's considered revenue. It's it deposited. That amount of money gets deposited in the. Bank. Okay. There you go. As overage so, instead of revenue because it's not. It's 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 bingo. It's bingo proceeds. It's proceeds from the conduct of bingo. You can't put it in a sales because it's not sales. How do you they didn't it? Buy, yeah, how, I'm sorry. That's I guess it would go off your sales because you sold the gift certificate. A gift certificate. It's a bingo product. But did they buy a computer? Did they buy a paper? Did they buy floors? So that's why I'm saying. How do we know where to do that? I guess is my question. I don't know. Is there a mis mis miscellaneous on no. the when you? We're not allowed to no. no. dismiss. <laughs> Expenses, but not no, no, right. let's uh, we might need to circle back to this on the next BAC meeting. I don't want to put Tyler on the spot too hard because it, there, there is a lot of scenarios that are out there in the industry right now that um, may or may not be the correct way to do things. And I doubt very seriously we could all come up with the variations that are that are going on out there, but maybe maybe nail down some some uh, common ways that it's being done, and then maybe submit it to the staff and let them do some research on it mm -hmm. and get back to us. That way, we're not you know holding their feet to the fire in an open meeting here. I don't want to mm -hmm. trap anybody or get anybody in a, in a jackpot, so to speak. Uh, if that's all right with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I do appreciate the answer on this. It, it, it's just, you, like you said, you didn't want to get into a trap where you get audited and they're going, well, this is just so wrong. So if it's like this. Definitely. Great. Definitely a good spirited conversation. Okay, yes. I get appreciate it. Coming. We're just trying to do the right thing. We just want to make sure we do it correctly. Yeah, so the rule says that funds from the sale of certificates shall be maintained separately from bingo funds. They are not considered bingo funds until the certificate is redeemed for a bingo card, paper, or card mining device. Funds remaining from an expired or unredeemed certificate shall be dispersed equally among the participating organizations and deposited into each of their respective general fund accounts. Just as overage. Just, yeah. General fund. General. Oh, and general fund. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it wouldn't go on gotcha. your donation. Oh, gotcha. Okay. You report them. Why, why couldn't we just do a rule for the same thing for the advanced seating? Yeah. I, I, it just seems to me that it's not, I, you know, it's not. 
proceeds from the conduct of bingo. It's because again, there's no guarantee that. But why could we do a rule to, to deposit in a general fund just like you just said to do gift, mm -hmm. gift certificate? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I feel like I'm on Trace's peg, but is there some way we can talk about how to do this? Because I know um, that's going to be a big seller. If you're going to be giving away a five thousand dollar price, say somebody's going to do three sessions and put five thousand dollars. I think we need to come up with a way because we don't want to. We want to guarantee that we at least get that money and we don't want to have these people or the charities lose the money. So maybe we can try to figure out some answer to help. Oh, I situation. We have to pre sell. Right. For a pre sell. Right. I guess that would be. We'll, uh, we'll definitely put that on the agenda for next time around to, to come back and talk about that. So in the meantime, uh, I guess we would need to come up with certain scenarios that we think could possibly work. Uh, and then talk with Tyler and Ladon about it in the in the interim. So that way we can come up with a solution by the next mm -hmm. three AC one. That sound good to y'all? Yeah. Very helpful. All right. Steve. Steve Bresnan. Uh, I hate to prolong Steve Bresnan on behalf of the Bingo Interest Group. I hate to uh, prolong the conversation. I know you want to move along, but uh, I'm concerned about the $80,000 Resold for the non annual holder that uses a temporary license. Mm -hmm. um, when you say something's been pre sold, $80,000 worth has been pre sold, I don't know what that means. Do you mean that I'm assuming it is it pull tabs? No, basically, what it, what it includes is beer, wine, dinner, bingo, it's an all-inclusive if you're talking about a purse bingo. So what they're pre-selling is a ticket to the charitable event. And it just that's just one of the line items included is the ability to play bingo for this merchandise. Okay, and, and they have a certain amount of money available to them to uh, play that, or that's when they go into their pocket to buy- it's Usually donations. Full time. No, well, with the license they can buy from a distributor, the bingo cards they need, but you know, most of their stuff is donations, to my knowledge. Okay, I'm concerned about what happens with pull tabs and bingo cards before any cage, because we have a, the law clearly prohibits you from setting aside, dedicating those, what's that, I'm not using the reserving. 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 Those. All right. So I want to make sure nobody's telling me that we let me, in, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, we didn't say a thing during the legislative session when the ability to do that was expanded. The, the non annual license people were able to do something because we didn't want to go kick around the little guys and people that are intermittent competition. Right? But if somebody's selling eighty thousand dollars worth of bingo product before an occasion that they're participating in, then I want to know what the hell's going on. If are those being reserved, or are you just saying when you say you have the right to play bingo, assume you got the right to play bingo anytime you want to play bingo. Well, they like I said, they they do, it, they do it for the event. They don't they don't give away cash. All right, it's all are they using are they using they're not using pull tabs to my knowledge. The ones I deal with on these one offs, they don't really use pull tabs. So Steve approved by the Texas Lottery Commission. Yes, yes. But they also there. buy online. See, that's another thing we need to address. A lot of these one offs that do this, they buy their product online. They don't buy it from a licensed distributor. You get, you get what I'm driving at? I get exactly what you're you driving at. Uh, we've had discussions uh, about this in the, in the uh, legislative process, and I've made commitments and statements to legislators that I want to uh, make sure that I'm being accurate about. So, so uh, basically, uh, when those tickets are sold for those one-off events, they may include wine, they may include dinner, but let's be very clear, purpose for them being there is to play bingo and win prizes in excess of, the, I think in excess of the current stack. The question is, is there a stack of cards that's reserved for that person, or do they just show up and uh, somebody walks around and, you know, passes out bingo cards randomly, or? Both. 
I've seen both. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry. Well, no, no, I because we've been asked to, to service so many of these because I said they just got bagged really hard last time with not even registered workers. But we have had to send our and, and uh, the first time we sent our registered workers out there, it, it was a mess. I mean, they had a huge mess, and we just kind of put it back in order. But they do pay. They pay to come in. They have tables, usually tables of eight, beer, wine, food. They do buy, and we bought. They bought everything from Good Time at the time, and they even went to board. So, but they do have paper. They don't. I've never seen anybody sell pull taps, Steve. I've never seen any of them yes. sell pull taps. But they do have paper, and they just kind of ours walked around, and gave everybody one. If you wanted another one, it cost a dollar. At first, they never sold any extra paper. We finally said, "You've got 400 people here. So get another, you know." So we started selling paper to just, but it was a dollar a strip. There's nothing sitting there reserved. It was all legal. And I'm not saying the other ones aren't. And the, the purses are donated, and they're pretty nice. So, but uh, here's here's what I'm driving at. Ultimately, you uh, several people have asked me this question about pre-sales, and I've said uniformly. But I don't want to give you legal advice because a, a I'm not you're you're not my law client, and b I don't know who's gonna you know I've been told so and so wants to know this and now I'm giving legal advice to people I don't even know much less are not my law client. <laughs> I've, I've uh, avoided that, but every time I ask what does it mean to pre-sell something, I have no idea what they're talking about. I, I think you have to change your terminology. And be more specific. It's unfair to this man and this woman to be opining uh, ad hoc in a in this public meeting. And Trace, I think this is where you were you were headed uh, because it's not exactly clear what you're talking about. I think it, I, with regard to the uh, seat fee versus um, uh, a gift certificate, it, the it, the question is, what are you intending to sell? At least with the gift certificate, you know you're intending to sell bingo product. Uh, and we have a rule that says what to do with that money. Uh, if, the, if the agency's position is that the seat fee is not bingo money, then uh, the, you know I would want to know, is it the lessor that's charging it, which I suppose the lessor can do? Is it the conductor who's charging it since they uh, they have the lease of the prior premises during that time period. Um, and then the question of that is, you know, where do they put the money? And it, it, it pretty, seems pretty clear. It didn't win the bingo again. It's this pre-sale thing that I think is unclear. So I like the idea of you, y'all, somebody writing down some scenarios uh, that then they have a chance to think about in advance and look at the rules. Um, if a rule would be helpful on the attendance fee or something, then I think, uh, you know, Tyler and Ladonna will have to figure out whether they have authority under the Bingo Enabling Act or the Lottery Commission Act to adopt a rule that tells you what to do with that money. They can, they can tell you don't put it in the bingo account, I think, pretty clearly. But, uh, anyway, I'll prolong the conversation. I'm just saying, I, I keep getting asked about this pre-sale business, and I have the slightest idea. Uh, and apparently there are multiple scenarios, so the word pre-sale may not be applicable in every uh, scenario. I think whether you call it a gift certificate or a pre-sale or a seat fee, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say the intention is for them to plan that. <laughs> so well, I, uh, I, mean, I, I need to clarify some sure that I agree 100%. I understand that. I also understand that what's driving it is now a magnet that we've got in the statute now that can draw more people in uh, and the desire to market that ahead of time and start at the ground running September 1st and all of that, that, that uh, leaves me joyous because that's what we were trying to achieve was that magnet. Um, I just ask people to slow down just a little bit and uh, be careful what you do. Uh, and I don't think pre-selling, if, if you mean by pre-selling, they're going to give me ten dollars, and I'm going to take this stack of bingo cards and set them aside and put Steve Bresden's name on it. I, I think you're going to have a really serious. I think. Taken isn't there a rule that says you can't sell pool tabs before your license time starts? You can. You can sell sell paper and computers as long as they're not used. And at the license time. You can't redeem them until license period starts. 
reading the title. Okay, so. but also, I just kind of want to touch on that just a, real quick. So one of the things that we also need to just determine, and this is just for us, is um, the, the word reserved. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like we're, I'm selling this ticket and I'm going to put your name, Steve Resnan, on this bingo card. You know, it's a luck of the draw, just like when you come in. And so I think that's one thing we just need to touch on when we do finally have this conversation. OK, thanks. I didn't mean to prolong your being fine. Thank you, sir. OK, you have questions on that? No, uh, you clarified it for me. I just the because uh, I'm covered up with reselling right now. There's a lot of stuff that's fixing to happen on September 1st that is not, and you're aware of it. Hey, Brian, I've been, and I've done a, new, a number of new Brian, If if Would you please make it official? The court reporter is online. So if you would come up and state your name. and No problem. We're, we're glad to hear from you. Ronnie Baker with Roy Bingo, a few other companies. Uh, the pre selling, I, I'm asked all the time do we pre sell or not? There's a number of large events that are fixing to take place on September the 1st, going up to around $25,000. I've done a number of purse bingos. I do them all the time. I've actually had them sell tickets, pull tabs, and, but you're right, it's drinks, food, uh, the ambiance, they're all donated gifts, but the pull tab issue is something that needs to be reckoned with. But the pre-selling, which you have people out there in multiple locations right now, pre-selling tickets for a number of locate for one location. And there's no gift certificate, just buy it or you can be awarded whatever you want to call it, a pre-sell ticket, a VIP ticket. You can be awarded that and that'll get you in the door to go play for $25,000. It's kind of like the goose laid the golden egg. I, I think, and what Steve is saying, some 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 prudence in what you say, sir, needs to be observed and a little bit cautious because I think if it blows up, there's this conflagration or what do you want to say, uh, uh, much like the one on 20 apps, you know, some time ago, you know, uh, the state of Texas is going to frown on that. A lot of the small bingos, you know, they're they're calling me, they want to pre-sell. I'm saying, hang on, you know, there's a lot to be considered because my concern is negative net proceeds September 1st through the 4th is going to be great. After that, watch out. So, uh, it's coming. Thank you, sir. And and you're right. That's that's my concern. But uh, yeah, the first bingos and fluffy animals and all that stuff. You know, we raise a lot of money. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ron. All right. So we'll come back to that item uh, on the next BAC meeting. Um, I think there may be one more thing we need to add to that agenda, and that's going to be the, the auditors, investigators. Things are fixing to change. We know park games are legal. We play some park games now based on the $50 rule. But these park games are going to be $500 leading into $500. This All this needs to be clarified. and. Because you got auditors that go into one hall now, same auditor tells them, hey, you're not doing this right. Go to the next hall. They're doing the same thing. They don't get told. I think we need some consistency in how we're going to regulate these bingo halls. OK, because um, I'm, I'm, I'm completely. Well, what's going to happen is it like I don't know anything. Well, this is a, an add on and this is for them because now we have five thousand dollars. There's right. going to be progressives. There's going to be park games. These auditors or investigators are going to need to know because there's going to be halls complaining on everybody. We are going to have to know how we're going to handle all this influx of he said, she said, she's doing it that way. I don't think it's right. He's doing it that way. I don't think that's right. I mean, they're going to bear the burden of that. So I think, you know, we need to look at that for them, for the TLC, for the CBOD, because they're the ones that have to go out, right. you know, on the pre-sale. All of it's going to come together. It, this is a whole myriad of stuff we need to really be looking at. Well, and to throw into that, I know that um, we've looked into that. So if you pay $1,200 or less minus your entry fee, you don't have to do a WG. So it said 1201 
after that. And I know a lot of people that I've spoken to customers that told me, well, I don't want, you know, you're not going to get mine. So I, I know that that's probably going to be a cap. So that's another thing, another thing to throw in there is that the $1,200 minus. So that's, so I, the question would be if you have to pay a hundred dollars to buy in and it's $1,200 payout for one game, say there's multiple $1,200 games. Do you back out the hundred dollars for that 1200 or do you back out? I think this it's, is just it's per prize per prize, but so do you divide that by say you have five and so it's like $20, you only back out $20. So I think there's some things that we just need to kind of help the whole industry. Are you talking about for IRS rules? Well, it's going to be IRS, but customers are already complaining. Well, like I don't know if the wager works like that on bingo. Now on a full it, tab, it can be 600 times the bet to keep you from doing. So for example, if you have a $2 full tab, you can play up to twelve hundred dollars before and you don't have to do a w2g but in bingo part of it bingo is 7.99 i don't know if the wager even counts it well what i read it did or that's what came up so that's why i think this is another thing that we need to discuss just to help everybody who's doing it across the board to make sure everybody's doing it right i don't want somebody to get in trouble next year you know with all this stuff well, so you know, it, it, if I may real quick, and, okay. and I agree with you that we need to discuss all of this. What I do want to remind um, everyone is that we, we we can't give legal advice. Uh, <laughs> uh, we would have to rely on the staff for that. Um, but I think definitely that we 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 do need to address the and that's one of the purposes of the Bengal Advisory Committee is to address all the different games like Tommy said the park games the progressive games we need to talk about those in, in our meetings to try to explain them uh, from different areas of the state so that not only can we gain knowledge but we can dispense it as well um, and we may come across something that the staff says wait a minute you know you shouldn't be doing that and that's one of the things that we would we would love to hear from staff so yeah Tommy definitely definitely we would like to talk about that so that we'll get that on the agenda for for uh, next time Grace can I say one more thing sure. I'm sorry I'll go back to sleep after this I <laughs> um, I, I would implore the uh, distributors and your colleagues who are not represented here today, if y'all would communicate with them to put out some kind of message to your customers that says, if you're going to give away $1,200 prize, talk to your CPA, talk to your bookkeeper, talk to your lawyer, talk to somebody before you do it. I don't think that the agency, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak for you, which I rarely do. I don't think this agency is going to give you IRS federal tax advice. Uh, and the as we've had discussions about these, uh, the elevation of the prize caps, or in some cases, the non-existence of a prize cap, I've always said there are practical aspects of this that are going to be self-policing. The $1,200, the IRS implications, that's one of them. The net proceeds implication. Who brought up the net proceeds uh, earlier? Whoever did that. You still got to have net proceeds, y'all. And the the uh, if you're selling something like a seat that's not bingo product, you're not going to be able to use that in the net proceeds calculation. I would imagine. So, people, I hope we didn't do our job too well. People need to think about what they're doing. Don't get greedy and put your toe in the water here and talk to the uh, folks that can give you tax advice and think about what, you, what you're doing. Uh, all I would say, I implore the distributors, this is the reason we had a call one day about this very subject. Uh, I would implore you all, come up with some neutral way where you're not giving legal advice to your customer that says, uh, be careful, don't let this bite you in the back. And we have, and we're telling everybody to dip their toe, but. I think as as Mr. Baker mentioned, we can we can tell them to dip their toe all they want, but 
at the end of the day, they're going to come out firing if they want. I deal with candidates and politicians all the time that work the same way. <laughs> anyway, thanks. I, I, thanks, I, Steve. Shut up. No, you're fine, Steve. Thank you. Any other new business? All right. Uh, any other public comment on new business? Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Sagabarth. I'm president of Game Print Solutions. We're a manufacturer based here in Dallas. Quick question with the change in the legislation going from 750 cap to 5,000. Historic cap. So with the change to 5,000, is it reasonable to assume that would also be the dollar amount for the pull tax? Uh, actually, our reading of the law is that there is no longer any limit on the amount of prizes that can be awarded to the pull tab. Thank you very much. Yeah, because the the, the, <laughs> the occasion limit of five thousand, <laughs> as the next line says, except for pull tabs. Right. So pull tabs don't fall within the five thousand dollars. Okay. Appreciate. It. Thank you. <laughs> All right. No other public comment. <laughs> Right. Item number 10, set the date for the next meeting. Uh, I was told this morning that October the 11th is the next available time for the room. So we will meet here October the 11th, and hopefully it will be much cooler. We've asked the staff to turn down the heat outside for October the 11th, so they said they'd work on that. Is that one bird for that vacation? <laughs> we will have uh, teams available for that, right? If there's not any, if you can't make, none of, if oh, yes. you can't make it. Yes. Yeah, I'll be at a convention, so I'll have I'll be virtual. Good <laughs> Are you going? Maybe. We can push the meeting back. Sixty. I'll about that. Thousand dollars. Okay. All right. Uh, October 11th, next meeting, uh, 10 a.m. And uh, the next item is uh, adjournment. So thank you very much for coming to this meeting. We will see y'all next time.